Okay, this is part three of my objections to this Avebury planning permission thing, the planning uh, application. Okay, if you haven't watched parts one and two, go and watch them because it won't make sense what I'm talking to you about now, so go and watch them. Anyway, carrying on, Mr. R. Vlitos, who lives in 110 High Street, Avebury, Marlborough, um, then goes on to say, this change of use from being a toilet into a crop circle centre would cause numbers of these enthusiasts to rise and this would, lead, this would lead to further antagonizing the farming community some who regard this phenomena as rural graffiti for the deluded well he's kinda right I can't deny that people are deluded on what makes crop circles but that's kinda the beauty of what crop circles are about I mean, people are kind of deluded on what the purpose of Avebury is about, yes? Whether it was made by the Druids, or whether it was made by some strange people who used to worship serpents, because it's supposed to be a serpent, you know, with a pregnant belly. Did people used to come there and practice pagan rites, or did they practice fertility stuff, or did they, you know, it, it, it's shrouded in mystery. Avebury is a mysterious place, yeah? It, nobody really knows the answers. There's a lot of theories, but nobody has the answers, yeah? And what do people at the National Trust and historians do at Avebury? They dig up the stones, and they try to work out where the stones would have been, and they try to do things which are actually um, to put the stones back in place, which is, okay, that's not a bad idea, is it? You know, let's, let's try and recover what Avebury was. And I think, you know, any, in, any efforts like that is good. But, what else goes on at Avebury? Yeah? Avebury is a tourist centre. So it has a restaurant called The Stones Cafe. It has a bookshop run by the National Trust. It has a privately run shop which sells jewellery and things to do with everything from crop circles through to stone circles through to fluffy, cuddly sheep, you know? Now, sheep let's come back to that one if people are worried about whether or not Avebury is being is going to be mistreated by having croppies you know ooh, these horrible croppies people who believe in crop circles and they're interested in crop circles yeah if it's going to mean an increase in people who are coming to Avebury don't the National Trust and the planning people think that those people who are crop circle enthusiasts are going to come to Avebury anyway because they're interested in crop circles they're going to come to Silbury Hill they're going to come to Avebury because they're in the area and they're going to visit crop circles so they're visiting Avebury anyway they come to Avebury anyway and they're entitled to come to Avebury to go to the pub to eat food and to go to the Stones restaurant to meet their friends and they're entitled to go into the shops to buy the books on crop circles so there's already a flow of people who come to Avebury regarding these things yes they go to the tourist information office and ask the tourist information office where the latest crop circles are so they're already there they're already in Avebury right now what do people who come to Avebury get from the Stones okay you've got these these commercial enterprises, okay, they exist, but what do they get from the stones, okay, and what do the National Trust actually offer people to do with the stones? Let me point you out something that is actually really fucking disgusting. What they get is shit. What am I on about? They go to see the stones, what do they get? They get, they get shit. They get excrement. What sort of excrement am I on about? Human excrement? No. Animal excrement? Yes. What type of animal excrement? Well, I just mentioned it a couple of seconds ago. Sheep. Because guess what grazes in the stone circle? Pretty much all year round, 24-7, 365 days a year, which is actually bad for sheep because Anyone who knows about rotational farming knows that you shouldn't keep sheep and cattle in a field at the same time 
right, or one after another, because of the worms and parasites that go through their system, yeah, you need to take them out of the field and not have them there for a period which will allow the parasites in the land to die, so that when you get them back in their grazing, yeah, that the parasites won't be there. It's called rotational farming. You you put some crops on the land, then you don't use crops, then you let it you let it turn into grass, then you let the sheep go on there, then you let the cattle go on there, then you don't use it again, so the parasites disappear. Now, for some strange reason, right, explain it to me, National Trust, because I would love to know where the farming logic in this comes. Where does the farming logic in this come in allowing the farmer, right, who does this, to put the sheep in there 24-7, 365, yeah? Which means that those sheep are being mistreated by having parasitic problems in that area. And if he's actually doing something to get rid of the parasites by spraying the ground, which I don't know if he does, if he sprays the ground to get rid of the parasites, then that is something which is going to affect the health of the animals. Plus also, he's probably having to dose highly yeah, those sheep that live on that land, dose them highly to stop them um, getting parasites. So it means that those sheep have to live a rather organophosphate um, injected, you know, tube down the throat, uh, you know, squirt some, s squirt some sc crap into their stomach. They're having to endure that in order to be there 24-7, 365 days, shitting, sleeping, crapping, pissing in, w in this national heritage site, yes? And why? Why do they want that? Do you know why I think it is? Do you know why I think this is? It's a clever little plan. It's a dirty little plan. And I don't know who, who hatched this little plan, but I think it was hatched, and I think somebody somewhere knows exactly what I'm talking about. Now, it's either going to be the farmer who hatched the little plan, or it's going to be the National Trust, right? I don't know, it might be somebody else, but I think it's either going to be the farmer or the National Trust. Do you know what the effect of having sheep shit all over the ground is at Avebury? Yeah? Do you know what the effect of having sheep shit everywhere at, on the ground literally everywhere you know you've got to watch where you step when you're walking through Avebury because of the sheep shit do you know what the effect of it does it stops people wanting to sit down on the grass it stops them wanting to sit down because it feels dirty it feels dirty and they don't want to sit down yeah because there's shit everywhere yeah and the thought of urine yeah now people don't want to sit down so guess what it keeps them on their feet and why does it keep them on their feet? Because they want them to come and have a look at the stone circles, walk around and then fuck off. Yeah? But where can they fuck off to? Where can these people who visited this national heritage site, yeah, which is covered in shit, yeah, covered in excrement, where will these people fuck off to? Where can they fuck off to? Well guess where they can fuck off to? The cafe, the red lion, yeah, <laughs> the Stones restaurant, which is one of the most expensive restaurants. I've seen for a fucking long time, you know, four quid for a bloody bowl of soup that's like that, yeah? Um, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to come to Avebury. Now, it used to be a free car park, but the locals took the free car park back. They said, no, 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 we need the free car park. We need that free car park, which is actually right next to the lodge, yeah, and, and opposite the post office, the shop, the local shop. They took that back. They took that back. They said, we need that. We need that for ourselves. And guess what? If you go there in the middle of the day, the car park's empty, two or three cars, because only the locals have passes to be in there. Okay? And if you go there at night, five or six cars and empty. So guess what? They took that car park back because they needed that car park for themselves. The locals wanted that car park for themselves. Yeah? And then it's empty. So why couldn't it have been like it was before? Why couldn't it have had a certain amount of spaces which are allocated for the locals and a certain amount free? Do you know why? Do you know why? Because the National Trust then turned the other free car park, the one that was free across the way, into a pay car park. Pay, pay, pay. You have to pay to park in that car park now. So what was free became pay. 
So now when you come to Avebury, you get a nice little sting in the tail. It used to be free, and you could walk around the stones, and, it, and you could spend some time, and it was free. Yeah? You wouldn't want to sit down because of the sheep shit. Yeah? But you'd go and spend some money. You'd go and spend some money in the shop.